So welcome to the June Python and Oracle database office hours. This is an ask me anything kind of session. Um, pretty much anything goes. Obviously, anything we say can't be held against us. So on the session today, we have Anthony Turninger, the creator and maintainer of the CX Oracle database API for Python. Myself, product manager. So I do some of the back end work, keeping everything just ticking along. And Blaine Carter, who's one of our evangelists here in the open source space. And you can feel free to ask us any questions anytime using any of those mechanisms you see there. So, and this should be a chat, I think it's just coming up. Yeah, so that you can uh, a chat session on Zoom that you can use. So quick overview, if I can get the keys to be in the right screen. Um, so this is really to give you a voice. I know we don't have a huge number of people. Um, but it certainly is an opportunity for you to ask anything you like, and you can always email us questions. We can answer them in email or in a session like this when it takes, uh, when it's, uh, when a discussion is better. Zoom has a couple of controls, so you can chat, unmute yourself, talk, whatever you like. So the icebreaker theme I thought this month that we would cover was binding named object types and I have this on my head at the moment because we're adding support for this into our one of our other database drivers for the Node.js ecosystem and copying a lot of the stuff that Anthony's done here in the Python API. In fact, Anthony's doing most of the work in the, the Node space as well. So named object types in Oracle database, you may be familiar with some of these, the user-defined types. Some predefined types exist, such as the spatial data objects. We see a lot of people using those SDOs. So binding support in Python CX Oracle has been around for quite a number of versions now. You had query support way back in version four, uh, binding for insert, interacting with PL SQL came in five, we're already up to seven. Uh, 7.2 is going to be released shortly, momentarily, as some countries say. And access to these in Python is relatively easy. You have to do a, a get type, connection get type. And you can see this is off connection objects. So it actually does require a connection. It requires a trip to the database to get information from the database about the object type so that Python can construct a representation of that type, know the attribute names. If you then want to create an attribute, an object yourself, you can just call new object directly. So just to look at a quick example. So I've only got half a dozen slides here. So this won't take too long, but this is the, the SDO example, the spatial example, and this type is in all editions of the database, so you should see it with XE, Express Edition, right up to Enterprise Edition, Cloud versions. Um, so you can make use of really nice spatial functionality in your applications. Blaine had an example out there, um, Dino Date, which was using spatial as well. So I think that's still out there on GitHub if you want to take a look. This has a number of uh, types in this, this SDO geometry object, and a couple of those are actually underneath uh, uh, collections. They're arrays themselves. These LM info and ordinates attributes of SDO geometry are also subtypes. So in Python code, as I mentioned, you do get type. We pass the type name in, and also we want to get information about those subtypes. So we pass those names into get type. We end up with a Python representation of that Oracle object. So these things at the top here, lines one, two, three, are uh, Python objects, but representing the Oracle objects. And then you get these new methods off the, the Oracle types. Uh, G type, if you remember, was just a straight number, so we can set that directly. The subtypes, we pass in array values, and then we can do a straight insert into our table down the bottom with a direct bind, just binding into the, the value of that, uh, that object. It's one of those things where it just kind of just works, quote unquote, so it's, it's kind of really nice to use, almost doesn't need a lot of explanation, but there are one or two little things to, to talk about. Uh, collections and records, likewise. Um, so these are things which are available only in the PL SQL context, not in the SQL context, and they have various forms, um, Similar roles in terms of the methods, you just call get type. Um, one little trick here is that you need to be using the later versions of the Oracle database, or, or not so late in many senses. But if you're still using the old XE 11.2 edition, you haven't updated to the Express Edition 18, which has been out for a little while, 
then you're not going to be able to have this functionality. Don't forget that the client version of the Oracle libraries, the you know, typically instant client and the database don't have to be the same version. So you can always update one, even if you're stuck at an older version. You won't get the functionality here, but you might get some other better functionality. Binding collections, same sort of thing. So here's the, the setup example, just the, the back end of what's happening in the database. You've run your SQL statements in your favorite SQL creation tool, SQL Plus, for example. Um, so you get a table of index by binary integer. So one thing which isn't supported, and this is nothing we can do about it, so it's much lower layer in the database, we don't have index by varchar support. So that's just one little gotcha there. And to complete the method as you've kind of looked ahead, you can see that I'm, I'm passing out a copy of a user-defined type. So no surprises, we create an object so we know what Python knows what kind of object we're going to actually expect, get type, create an object, and we bind it for the out data. This is going to be returned to Python. And then we can iterate over it in various different ways. Either the top loop is this uh, just going through the, the keys, and the bottom is just printing out all of the uh, everything as a, a list, just like the um, values as a list. Uh, there was a little bit of discussion recently. This is interesting that as list is a little slower in pandas in recent versions. Um, be interesting to see a test case for that. We don't have one yet. That's a kind of recent issue somebody's mentioned on on Slack uh, on GitHub. And if you have any more information about that, that would be great. It's certainly kind of on par in terms of pure CX Oracle performance between versions of CX Oracle. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there in the pandas. It may be a user configuration issue, a data issue. But uh, if you do see anything, obviously just let us know and we can look into it. Records, very similar. So again, PL SQL type. So you're doing this in the context of a package here, creating a record, has a number of attributes there in the record, the, the conveniently named number value, string value, date value, Boolean value. And again, we're passing these, in this case, it's an in out. So passing something in and passing it out. And we're just munging the, the data, input data and, and setting it that will be passed out. Um, as I say before, you know, this is almost sort of no brainer stuff. It just kind of works, does what I mean. Um, again, get type, create a new object, and then we set the attributes directly. Notice the, these are uppercase. So we have Oracle's confusingly um, naming conventions that if the object was created, I'm going to go back a slide if I can. Uh, if the Object was created with case insensitive, insensitive values. Anthony likes using upper and lower case mix, but in, you know, in Oracle world, this is effectively case insensitive because there are no quotes around the attribute names. Then when it gets to the drivers, everything gets expanded to, by default to uppercase. So it's case insensitive in Oracle, but it's uppercase in Python by default. And if you'd used quotes in when I created the object in the database, then I'd have to use mix case here in the Python object. Um, and I don't think there are any surprises here. Set some values, bind it in. Um, you remember this was going to call, this, this procedure was going to change data values. So when we print things out, we're going to get slightly different values on the way out. And that's it just for the um, kind of icebreaker theme I had. Anthony, I'm going to put you on the spot. We've got Python 7.2 kind of coming up. We've got one little glitchy things there. We're trying to work out um, a kind of crash in some of the AQ and yep. queuing changes. And I think that's really the only roadblock to, to that. Plus I need to write some release notes. Do you want, and I know we talked about this in previous sessions. You just want to give a summary of the, I think there are two main changes in that kind of upcoming soon to be released version. Uh, yeah, the AQ thing is the biggest one. Let me just look at the... Uh... So you have binding for raw types if, and yep. you have the bulk AQ. Bulk NQ and DQ. Yes. Um, the other thing that is uh, new is bulk insert for soda. That's um, preview only at the moment. Yep, yep. <clears throat> and then a number of uh, just small little enhancements and bug fixes based on uh, issues that were reported. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sounds good. Um, so anyway, we'll try and get that out to you soon. We just need to sort out that whether that IQ issue is us or another layer and how we can mitigate it and whether it's our testing, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, so hopefully you'll see that soon on the normal places, PyPy, just be able to install an, an update immediately. So with that, I see a number of participants has kind of come up. So it is kind of over to you. Um, if you have direct questions or you know, suggestions, the chat window is there. Blaine put some stuff up there with the, the Dino Dino date, sorry, Dino date, Dino date, dinosaur date, um, and you can chat in there if you like as part of the Zoom. If you're a bit shy about talking, and uh, just let us know what you like. We'll sort of sit here in silence for a few minutes until you start chatting, and if nobody chats, then we'll just just drop off and make sure this video gets uploaded pretty quickly. So while you're waiting, I'll just put up the slide with our contact information so that uh, you can screenshot that and drop off if you if you want to. Otherwise, please ask any questions. I just added to the uh, chat also a link to the samples. Um, the slides that uh, Chris showed, some of the samples can be seen in PL SQL collection, the PL SQL record, and also insert geometry. And then a much more complex one, which is the spatial to geopandas. That requires a bit more uh, things to be installed, but uh, it's a little more real world type of example. Anthony, I was going to throw over to you to demo those. Do you want to do that or we've kind of covered the basics anyway? Yeah, we covered the basics. I mean, I can go over them if you want. That's not a problem. Um, why don't you just go over the real world example while waiting and I'll stop sharing. You can just just walk out, walk your way through that one. Sure. All right, I just got to share myself a minute. All right, you can see now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. Good. So there is this. This is spatial to GeoPandas. Uh, this one requires uh, the GeoPandas library, which is a popular library for working with sp geospatial data. Um, so there's links here and to um, acquire the various bits and pieces that you would need to run this example. And as it says here, this example shows how to bring geometries from Oracle Spatial, i.e. SDO, into GeoPandas, and then perform a simple spatial operation. Um, so this is the various code. Here's the, there's this shapely thing that you require and GeoPandas, those are the two bits that are extra. So that, that WKB is the well-known binary format. So yes. I remember correctly, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So, here we're just saying we're just going to enable auto commit so that we don't we avoid an additional round trip to the database. You obviously don't want to do this if you want to do multiple statements, but when you're doing single statements, uh, it's a good idea. We're also here, as we can see here, using an output type handler to deliberately convert lobs into raw data directly, and that is also to avoid round trips to the database. Then this section here simply drops and recreates the table. You'll see that it's using this SDO geometry. And then we call once again our get type, and also this one here. The uh, these are sub element uh, objects, and here we we have a method to create the geometry object given a bunch of ordinates, uh, just uh, points in space. So here we're going ahead and this is, these things are all documented in uh, spatial on from Oracle. And then well, here. Just, can, can I just yeah. interrupt you there? So if you go back up to the, uh, the get type things, I did yeah. kind of mention that they perform round trips, but I didn't really emphasize that round trips are things to avoid in the database. So you really don't want to be calling get type a lot. Yeah, if you can yep. here as it's done kind of once and then hold that value in the variable and reuse that variable. That's going to save you a lot of scalability and performance issues. Do we have any things there and uh, we want to say about using uh, um, fully qualified names? I know in, in Node we do have that, but I don't think we've got some issues here in Python. No, it does a round trip in all cases. I don't have a cache like I've done in Node. Mm -hmm. So that might get uh, pushed back into CX Oracle at some point. Um, the other thing is, is you see this type object. These are um, sub um, element types. 
So it's possible that I might be able to give you that information directly without having to call connection.get type again. Mm-hmm. I can't remember whether I've done that yet or it needs to be done. So we always have work to do, but the bottom line is yeah. round trips are bad and you know, trying to avoid the calls which are going to make round trips to the database if you want best scalability. Yeah. So this here is some hard-coded numbers that define the state of Nevada, of Wyoming, and Colorado. And we go ahead and we go ahead and just insert this using execute many. So that's batch insert. Which is right. good for what reason? Uh, reducing round trips once again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, here, this is calling this SDOUtil.2 well-known binary geometry. So that gets it out into a state that uh, GeoPandas knows what to do with. And once that's been done, then we call this GeoSeries, which allows us to display it. And then finally, at the end, uh, one of the GeoPandas um, operations, which is called Unary Union, which takes those three uh, geometries, geometries and turns it into one. So if we run this, you'll see here that the, this is the GeoPandas series, right? So here's Nevada, Colorado, and Wyoming as a series of polygons. And then this here, is the polygon that would correspond to the union of the three of them. And if you take that information and throw it into, um, uh, there's a particular website, which I can't remember, remember yes, at the moment, I, yeah, yeah. that lets you display this information. Yeah. yeah. So we've done our bit, we've given you the data, and then you can use it as you like to generate it, send it, combine it with other things. Perfect. Okay, well, we don't have any questions at the moment, so I suggest we just call it a day and we will upload the video and reconvene next month. For anybody who's not on Northern Hemisphere vacation, I've started seeing a lot of auto replies in the inbox recently from people who must be having a nice little break somewhere. Let me just finish up. There are the resources again and the closing slide. Thanks very much for attending the Python and Oracle office hours. See you next time. Bye-bye. See you. See you, everybody.